Hello everybody, it's SCD Matt Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the 60 TP, a, the Polish Tier 10, and it's been around for quite some time. Um, whenever it first came out, it was, I am within like a week and a half, I got my hands on it, and just, just because, you know, you, you, you've seen replays from PC, you've seen some other stuff go on, and you stop, and you're just like, wow, that looks absolutely fantastic, and it's, it's because it is, it is absolutely fantastic. So, First things first, I think the number one thing that I'm going to want to do is have a brain fart. Really big brain fart. I didn't prepare this. Now now it's prepared. Okay, you know what? Let's just go ahead and do this. We got this. We're fine. Are we fine? I think we're fine. I think we're good. 60 TP Poland, Heavy Tank Tier 10. Don't ask me to pronounce this because I don't even... A lot of shit, blah, 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 it's 60 TP. <laughs> it's, it's a bops up inside the game. I'm not going to even try it. So starting off, 250 standard penetration along with 317 premium pen. Keep in mind, your premium is heat. So it, whenever it hits the armor, it tries going through it at that angle at the thickest. Heat rounds can auto ricochet 85 degrees. If you didn't know that, you do now. Um... The the biggest feature about this tank and what I absolutely love is the 90 millimeter penetration with the high explosive and the 950 alpha that, that the high explosive offers. If you use this tank right and you load your high explosive at the right time, it's going to absolutely devastate people. Along with that, the high explosive has a 3.66 splash radius. So if someone's behind a wall and you can't really get them and you want to splash them, you can splash them for like 50 to 100 damage, depending on how far away they are. Or if you're shooting, let's say, at their turret and you want to splash the top of the tank, shoot the top of the turret, you might be able to splash right above their 20 millimeter or 50 millimeter, however thick it is on top of the turret or right underneath on top of the hall armor. It, it does a lot of damage. And using one of these tanks and just focusing out high explosives is a very common strategy. PC, it's been happening a lot. And honestly, a lot of people on PC are just like, ooh, no, don't like that. Other than that, your shell velocity, we'll, we'll jump into that later. But starting off, it's 900 across the board. That's all you got to know. Your standards, your heat, and your high explosives all have the same travel speed at 900 meters a second. Now... Still concealment, this is a heavy, but point eleven is actually pretty decent concealment. It's higher than a mouse, it's higher than an E100, it's on par to some more highly concealed heavies. So really, you have a decently concealed heavy, and if you're at mid-range, long range, you can use that concealment to your advantage with Muffled Shot or a couple of other perks that can really help you out. Overall, 60 TP, I've put a lot of matches in this tank over the past year, two years, however long it's been in the game. I can't remember. All I know is it came out and I no life did. I grinded the crap out of it, got my hands on it, just because it's fantastic. It also comes with a whopping 2,600 hit points, which is actually in the higher category for the super heavies. So the mouse has got 3,000. Then you have the type 5 with 2,800. And there's, I, I do believe that there's one of 27, another, yeah, there's a couple around there, but 26, it's a lot of hit points. Trading with other people, you can trade without much of a problem. Now the heat pin at 317, you know, you've got other tanks out there. They got 340, uh, 400, 420, uh, what is it? 395, but 317, it's enough. Heat rounds, I honestly prefer heat rounds over APCR. It's just something that I enjoy a lot more compared to most. It, it, it just depends. You know, APCR can be just as good as heat, but there's some situation that APCR is not going to help you out. And with the loadout that this tank has and with the rounds, the way that they travel, it you get used to how they travel really easily and being able to swap your rounds freely with the advanced reloader. Yes, the advanced reloader, not the loader, the reloader. You being able to swap your shells freely with that 16 second reload or 17 second reload makes it to where you can be extremely versatile and control your damage output and help control the match a little bit more. Now, seven, oh, 2.78 rounds per minute. It's, it's fire rate is not exactly the fastest. I can't remember off the top of my head. I remember that when it was 6.0 first dropped, it dropped down to like 14.45 seconds on the reload and then they 
decreased it up to like 15 or 16 seconds. So you're still getting a pretty hefty amount of rounds off per minute. And I mean, if, if you control it right, you can maximize your DPM by swapping over to the high explosives and having full control. Jumping down, reload time 20.16. Yeah, you're definitely going to need a gun rammer on this. There's no getting away without one. 30 rounds of ammo capacity, accuracy 0.39. Accuracy is not too bad. You can get really get it buffed up. If you're looking to do your crew, honestly, accuracy overall, along with snapshot, maybe two of them, three of them, really up to you guys. But in my personal preference, you only need one perk on this tank for accuracy. I'd rather focus on your traverse speed and combined with traverse speed, I'd focus on turret rotation as well. Trying to get that thing towards highly mobile in the close quarters combat. 8 degrees of gun depression, it's going to allow this tank to work a ridgeline extremely well. Just being able to poke over and put a big fat gun in their face and still have heavy duty armor to handle it as well. Fantastic. 20 degrees of elevation, not going to have much of a problem there. Honestly, elevation, if, if it's 15 degrees or higher, it's going to work out really well. Anything below that, you're going to feel like kind of struggling. But 15 degrees or higher, fantastic. But 20 degrees, honestly, it's like golden number, right where it's supposed to be. Third armor, 260, 150, 100. Honestly, we're not going to be looking at this here. We're going to be jumping over to Tanks GG here in a sec. Along with that, turret traverse speed, 20 degrees. It is definitely not the fastest on its traverse speed. And with 390 view range, if you're running situational awareness and advanced optics, you're going to be getting about 454 for your maximum view range, but primarily whenever I'm playing this tank, I don't like to use advanced optics. I like to get a gun rammer, ventilation, and advanced reloader just to make it to where I can be a little bit more versatile in the match. So my base view range is 413, and then I have a premium consumable stacked on top of that. Honestly, I do not know the exact numbers that the premium consumable does increase your view range by because of how much they've reworked the system. And then once you activate it, you get that extra little bit of concealment, extra little bit of view range. So primarily, you're probably looking at about a 445 with the premium consumable. And when activated, you're going to be looking at about 470 to 460 meters of view range. It's enough to get the job done, but it's not enough to scout out those highly concealed tanks off in the distance. Along with that, 780 horsepower engine and a 13 total horsepower to ton. Just round it off. It's 0.3 away. Why not? Top speed, 35. Reverse speed, 14. This tank, you feel it being sluggish, but the trade-off is you got a lot of armor, and it just feels great. Just really hard to honestly feel like you're messing up inside of it. it in my opinion, the 60 TP whenever I start my free-to-play, might be one of the first tanks I grind out just because it feels really good to get in, handle, and play around. Plus, the, the tech tree going up to it, I enjoyed playing the 53 and the 50 TP. Those were all really good tanks, and I had no problem with them. Other than that, 15% fire chance. Honestly, in my 250-plus battles that I put inside the 50 TP, I think I've only been set on fire once. The entire time 50 tp's gas tank's not exactly the biggest on it so really if you guys are looking to not get set on fire often you can skip getting a fire extinguisher inside this tank and get away with it with no issues at all other than that traverse speed 24 degrees your terrain resistance they're not exactly the greatest especially on that soft terrain at 3.1 but you got 1.3 for firm terrain 1.8 for soft no medium terrain and the soft terrain yeah you're going to be feeling it just dying in soft terrain other than that let's go ahead and jump over to tanks, tanks gg oh my goodness my english today is not the greatest so one thing i'm going to be pointing out about the 50 tp is right off the bat looking at the top armor if you're shooting a 152 or bigger you can overmatch the entire top of this tank however if you're shooting a 150 and lower you're going to auto ricochet it's just going to be an auto bounce along with that right underneath the turret it's also 50 millimeters right down here as well which means that it can be overmatched just as much as the top armor can as well so if you're taking a 60 tp up against a 60 tp you're going to be firing into the top section here but occasionally it's nice to load a heat round to guarantee the pin going through the front drive ports just to get that extra little bit speaking of which let's actually load that 370 heat pin 317 heat pin now once the 60 tp starts to side scrape you will notice a little bit of an issue as they're coming around the corner the side cheeks coming around the bottom of the turret it flattens out and it's basically just really easy to go through not much of an issue there to rip through it 
And then the lower plate, you're looking at 110 millimeters along with 160 on the top. And right here on the driver's port, it's about 210 millimeters. The side armor on the 60TP is a massive brain fart. I'm trying to remember. Don't remember at the top of my head. 100 millimeters. That's actually really good. I can't remember. I believe I can't remember that. The side flaps in right here, they're 70 millimeters, so if people are launching high explosives, they can potentially damage the ammo rack because the ammo rack is actually right around right there. It's loading back the AP. Make it look better. There we go. There are auto ricochet. Hey, hey, I'm just going to spin it. Yep, there we go. Today's a good day. I don't know about you guys, but it was a good day. I just like to be a goofball. Problem solved. But 60 TP against standard rounds, it's going to stand up. It's going to have no issues at all. My personal preference for the tank, this thing is an absolute beast, no matter what situation you put it into. Now, after the match, we're going to take a look at my equipment, my crew setup, and we're going to, you know, take a look at the entire thing. However, I have to turn to my right to see this replay. Because I am slacking off. On extending the green screen and moving the camera because I'm a slacker. Other than that, dude, it's fantastic. If you guys are looking to grind out the 60 TP, honestly, once you get that 50 TP, the 50 TP is definitely worth keeping and having inside your garage as well, in my opinion, just because it's extremely versatile. Its turret armor is amazing. The hatches are located farther back, so once you max out the eight degrees of gun depression, it just feels great. Same thing about the 60 TP. Honestly, I don't feel much of an upgrade jumping to the 60 TP, except for you just get a bigger gun and like a two second longer reload with about like 200 more damage, 210 more damage. It, it just, it's fantastic. Other than that, first match over here in steps, I'm also, I believe, I'm playing with Blade on this replay. Um, hmm. Yes. Now, steps, if you guys don't know, I... I played some comp i had some fun screwing around with comp and you know there's some maps out there that you learn a lot of positions and whenever you're playing on steps i find that the eight nine and zero line is an area you want to take full control over if you have seven degrees or more on your gun depression along with really good turret armor if you take over this right side of the map it is basically game over for the enemy team every single time now this match doesn't exactly it go as planned. We kind of wanted to get into a gunfight, but what happened was is that we just started pushing. And we didn't want to stop, so loading a high explosive. Sadly, it was not a penetration, but 336 damage is not bad. You know, even if you're splashing them on the side right there, you know, a little bit of a track assist, critical damage, taking down the track, locking them down. The 60 TP is capable of just absolutely devastating someone trying to get away. And with the high explosive splash radius, it's a little bit more forgiving. Now, the 60 TP, in a lot of the times I've been playing it, I find myself struggling on some maps. And with the map rotation that we have right now, I'm just avoiding the big maps. I'm not going to lie. Those four new maps, I'm not a big fan of them. I do not want to play on them. In my opinion, they are Cold War only and do not need to be in World War II matchmaking because the 60 TP once they added those maps started to suffer a lot I went from a 91% on my damage standing all the way down to 82% and I completely put the 60 TP away but once I got the map rotation and I started to know what maps I'm going to end up on it was really nice to know that I'm now able to take out my 60 TP and just actually enjoy playing the game again because the 60 TP it's just it's one of those tanks that there's a reason why I've put so many matches into it. I enjoy playing the tank. I enjoy the big derpy gun that, that can be derpy or can hit really hard and have decent penetration. Now, overall, the 60 TP is more of a brawling tank than a medium range fighter. So really, whenever you're playing this tank, you want to try and get in close and handle that situation. And yes, I know with the reload it has, it makes no sense why you would treat it like a brawler. But with your your gun, your gun is just absolutely massive. It's super thick. We're looking at a 70 millimeter gun. So whenever you're going head to head against somebody, put your gun inside their gun. 
because they're not going to be able to overmatch your gun. If they're launching heat rounds, you're going to be losing 5% of your penetration every single 10 millimeters you travel through. 70 millimeters, do the math. They're losing a massive amount of penetration each time they're trying to go through the gun. And not just saying that it's going to be 70 millimeters in general. you got to remember, whenever you put your barrel in someone else's barrel, it's at an angle, which means there's a possibility their shell will just be straight up absorbed by your gun. Or you cancel out 50% to 60% of their overall penetration with heat rounds. However, AP rounds, they don't exactly care. They're just going to hit the gun, and if they don't overmatch the gun, they're going to bounce or get absorbed. But if it's at the wrong angle and you're not putting your gun in right, they're going to be able to go right through your gun and then straight through your armor. So be a little bit careful on that. Give it some tries. Experiment with it. Check out the um, armor of your guns and just go brawl for a little while. Try it out. It's a really good thing to learn. Definitely. Especially at the 60 TP. Now, right here, you know, we, we are up to 4,648 damage. And to be honest... That's about all we get up to. The rest of this match is just literally driving, 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 driving. And then, you know, in the end screen here, we take second. I got to rotate this way. Second place, Blade taking first. Blade's actually been having an absolute blast inside of his machine the past couple of days. But that is going to be one of the drawbacks to playing the, fit, the 60 TP. It's just slow. The, six, the 35 top speed, you're going to feel it kind of pushing you back a little bit and struggling just a little bit to get into those positions. Now, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, Ooh, dude, there are lots of problems. I want to see matchmaking take a little bit longer. I want to see full lobbies. I don't ever want to see bots. Now I recorded this replay and I sat there and I was wondering what's going on to be honest with you guys, because I had no clue what was going on at all. I mean, just to give you an idea, look at all the T-54E1s in the lobby. We got four of them on our team, and then four of them on the enemy team, and then two T-49s per team in, as well. And to find out, eight players per team were bots. Keep in mind, with the map rotation, I knew exactly what map we are going to be ending up on. So I was all like, I want to play my 60 TP on this map. I want to get in there. I want to go nuts. So I did. This was my last match that I played right before I got off for a little while. And took a break, you know, went and made some food, got some other stuff done. But I stopped and after the hour, I came back and I looked at the, the match results and I realized that it was NPCs. Now, this should have never happened because I literally... Tapped A and it put me straight into a game immediately. There was no wait timer. There was nothing. It was straight into a game. Nothing. Just blah. Poof. Tap A. You're in a game. And whenever I got into this match, I sat there and I was all like, okay, this is really weird. The Muppet Re and Smooth Brainery was going through the roof. I mean, right off the bat, you know, it's a normal day. We're just driving. We're cruising. We're having an absolute blast going simple. You know, it's just, it's another day in the 60 TP on Pilsen. And then I pull up and I see the T-54E2. I'm sitting there. I'm like, ooh, this is going to be nice. There's one shell. Okay, he missed. Second shell. Okay, he bounced. I took a look. 480 ricocheted. All right, so he's got possibly the big boy gun or I took a shell from somebody else and then I can't remember exactly how it goes but I was just sitting there like you're, you're sitting in the open you're taking shells you're not firing back because I don't show off names I don't like to go over gamer cards I don't like to shame anybody I never will shame anybody except for blade I will shame the crap out of blade because I want to shame the crap out of blade he needs to get better and he knows it but then again, I would also never replace him with anyone in the world. He is my buddy. We play games. And it's been that way for like five years. But it's, it, it is, it is what it is. I mean, we ended up in a lot. Oh, I ended up, I'm by myself. I'm running out of stuff to monologue about you guys. This is too long. This is just insane. And this match was just ridiculous. That there's nothing to really talk about. I mean, it was a good strategy on my part. You know, good placement. I was in a really good spot. There was another 60 TP in the enemy team. And I was in there like, oh, cool. This is going to be a 60 on 60 fight. I'm happy about this. 
Because seeing other people play the 60 TP is always cool to see them in it. Because it's just such a great tank. And you don't see a whole lot of them on the field. Nor do you see the ones using the advanced reloader to be able to swap shells freely. And I was getting rammed in the rear. And during the time I was getting rammed in the rear, you guys probably noticed I had my shell lined up perfectly ready to go. It wouldn't have been a penetration. And then it got slapped. And my shell went off. To find out, that's a bot. A bot rammed me and ruined my shot. Okay. I don't know what to say about it, but bots are stupid. Bots are beyond stupid. And they they just like to drive out in the open. I mean, look at this. Look, look at, look at this. What's he doing? I loaded in a high explosive. I'm sitting there. I'm all like, is that a player? No. It's not. An hour later, I'm like, no, it's not. At this moment, though, I'm sitting there like, what's going on? It's, seriously. They, it's like, you, you would think, okay, that's a 60 TP. I'm not pulling in front of that. But bots are all like, I have no fear. I come to you with no fear. However... We're up to, what is it, 2750 Ricocheted. Most of them are just auto-loading bots. And then, I'm so sorry, Conqueror, but you pull that in front of the 60 TP. You're gonna get slapped. Oh no, 60 TP. Yeah, I got slapped. But, it, it's just... Wow. And, nice good shell right there, good penetration. I, I'm just happy that a lot of my damage was against players, and that the, the balance was evened out, and it wasn't just the bots assisting them to help outperform me, but it was actually between just a couple of guys and then a couple of bots. So really, it was free damage, which I don't approve of. I don't want to see bots inside Tier 10 matchmaking. There should never be bots. I would rather see, like, a minute queue time wait before I would ever want to see bots in this game, because the bots inside this match are just not that intelligent. Now, if you guys haven't noticed, the 60 TP decided to shoot the E100. The bat chat artillery decided to shoot the art the E100. The medium, I can't even remember, oh, the, the bot decided to shoot the E100. And right here, loading an AP round, setting the bot on fire. Oh, look at that. Artillery shell coming up behind us. And here I am backing up and taking a massive 1200 damage. Now, this match, it, I, it was like a 9-5, to five, and we brought it back. Against bots, of course, though. Which, honestly, once I found that out, I was all like, this match was so freaking intense, but at the same time, stupid. And confusing. And made very little sense. And then once I found out it was bots, I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense now. I saw a lot of the same tank. I don't know why I kept on seeing the same tank. But just this this guy fired off his last shell and he's like i give up however he it was a pleasure having you on the team inside your own Panzer. if you ever catch this later in the future you are an absolute fantastic well, i gotta go this way dude i keep on messing up yeah asylum dude if you guys ever run into them they're not bad players they're definitely not bad players and right here i'm looking at the board i'm just like i i was it was during the recording and I just, I was just taking my time looking through this. I'm like, I'm not even going to look at anything. I'm just going to scroll through, do my thing. I'm going to jump over to the scoreboard because that's what I normally do. And now I'm actually going to pause this. But, but, lots of, my hands off the board. But you get the idea. Lots of freaking bots. Just bot, 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 bot. No. I don't want to see bots, but it, it happens. It does. I would rather see a minute queue time, though. Um, other than that, dude, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know I did, because it happened to me, and I was all like, what is this absolute Muppetry? Don't get me wrong. I have my Muppet moments, and my Muppet moments are like, trying to consistently ram and go absolutely nuts and then making your crap load of mistakes but other than that if you guys liked the video leave a like comment subscribe until next time see you on the battlefield